Hello and welcome back to the Only Fools of Horses YouTube channel. First of all, thank you very much for the support on the second anti-post video of our Cheltenham Festival series. We've got a rising now to 1,500 views. I think we've surpassed that now. We've got a decent amount of likes. If you haven't watched it already, there'll be a link on the top of your page to watch it now. Go and watch that before you watch this video. That's the priority here at Cheltenham Festival Anti-Post. Fingers crossed you can find some winners. And thank you very much to James Stevens from the Racing Post for coming on and Johnny Deneen the week before. We've already filmed our week three episode four with David Cross from the Noel Feely Racing Syndicate. It's an absolute cracker. So make sure to check that out on Monday morning, 8 a.m. next week. But we're going to be looking ahead to the weekend's racing. We've got Ascot and Haydock and the grade one Clarence House Chase. The Clarence House Chase with multiple runners in there. There's each way terms are like, no, there's only three runners in the Clarence House Chase this year. We're going to be digesting all the information, making our analysis with the usual boys, Lee and Harry. Harry, we've got an action-packed weekend. Or Well, it's, it's, it's two very good grade one horses in the free runner race, but it'll still be interesting to dive into the races surrounding it. Super Saturday. Can't beat it. It's uh, always good action on a Saturday, isn't it? I mean... I had two winners. Well, I had two winners on Saturday. They were relatively short. Uh, Pick Doherty, I thought, was really impressive. So, hopefully, we can find a few more winners for you all this Saturday and uh, put us in good form for Cheltenham. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Um, Lee, yourself, we've got Ascot and Haydock. A couple of nice grade races and a couple of nice handicaps to uh, have a little look at. I've certainly got some fans for the handicaps. It's going to be a, uh, an interesting weekend of uh, Cheltenham pointers. Yeah, especially in this Clarence House at Ascot. Um, look, obviously, uh, Edward Stone up against Enagamine. Um, we know what happened last season, but um, it, look, it's a good clash between the two of them. It's just disappointing that there's only three runners because um, it was near 10 grand for fourth place. So mm -hmm. it would be nice to see um, a few more in there having a go and having a fire at them. But look, it's two top class horses um, head to head. Sad sadly, uh, Royal Pagai isn't in the Peter Marsh there for Mr. Biad, but you know. But he is in the Gold Cup, and now Lahom Press is out. He is technically Phoenician. Oh, I shouldn't have said a word. <laughs> what you're saying is that he's Phoenician Williams' best chance in the Gold Cup. Is that what you're trying only to say? Chance. Only yeah, chance. Yeah. When, when was the last time Venetia when was the last time Venetia won the Gold Cup, Harry? Say again. When was the last time Venetia won the Gold Cup? Uh, just just as a little trivia question. Yeah, you're just trying to get me a little nibble and I'm not even going to bother. I'm not going to bother. <laughs> I'll, st I'll stick with you, Harry. I'll give you time to redeem yourself. We we trialled this last week where we're going to look through our sort of favourite performances of the week just gone by. We're recording this on the 17th of January. So the week just gone by now, our favourite performances we want to talk about and maybe one we're not so sure about uh, looking forward. Um, but we'll, we'll go to you first, Harry. We could talk about a lot of races that have gone on over, especially the weekend and the, and the days gone by. But what was your number one favourite performance that you want to talk about? Well, my number one, it has to be Galli de la Toe in the grade two, the Hampton Novice Chase. Listen, she booked out and... I put in the old gold racing racing weekly. I said that she was probably worth siding with because she'd probably be a nice prize because people would have fancy her after making a few mistakes at Kempton on Boxing Day yeah. or it could, it could have been the day after. I'm not too sure whether it was, but no. Listen, she absolutely dotted up. She jumped like a buck for fun, um, and she just ran away with it. Now the interesting one, obviously the boys from Let's Talk Racing, they mentioned the Goffer is could be working for a nice handicap <laughs> down down the line. But no, Gully Delato. Listen, she put her best foot forward. The heavy ground really suited her. Three miles round Warwick, the local course. Um, you can't really complain. And it was a good day for the Skeletons, obviously, the race after they won the, the Lambton uh, with Grey Dawn in as well, which is a, he's a nice prospect as well. Yeah, it looks like she, uh, it'd be interesting to see where she goes. She wants that sort of soft conditions and grey dawning. They could go to the Albert Bartlett with him. He'd only go to the Albert Bartlett if he was going to go to a race on the Friday the uh, at the festival. So they go to the Friday, but if not, they might say for a tree if they're not too uh, keen on him going to Cheltenham. Um, yeah, very nice Gallia de la Toe and obviously West Balboa won the Lanzarote. They, they're quite keen to make use of her mark going forward. I think she's been 
uh, reassess. She's and uh, West Balboa has got a mark of one three six or one three seven. So they're interesting to see how they can utilize that going to handicap. She has got a mare's herd entry, um, but they want to go down the handicap route. That's the uh, impression I got from Dan when talking to him at Warwick on Saturday. Uh, Lee, your favorite performance in the last seven days hit us. Um, an obvious one, but impervious. Uh, mm. there on Sunday, I just thought, um, to beat the boys. Uh, quick and up great. I thought it was a great ride by Brian Hayes um, to get the better of uh, journey with me. They pulled her a long way clear. Hador had previously won. Um, I think he was like 25 lengths back. I saw a Manila Kruna as well. Um, look, I just thought it was a solid performance from the mayor. Um, I, I did say today that she's not in the turners. Mm. Um, I know people uh, did say that she could get the allowance and go the turners. She's actually not declared in that race. And uh, she'll go Mayor's Chase, who's been bought by JP now. And, um, yeah, he's, he's bought a solid one. I, I was really impressed with that. And uh, she's quicking up well to get, get the better of Journey with me. So, yeah, solid run, Impervious. Yeah, it's, it's interesting that Impervious. They're not, they, they literally haven't sort of, like, confirmed her for anything to do with the Turners or the Ark. Or we know we had... We had Declan Carroll yeah. from and the Starters Always podcast put her up at 100 to 1 and on, on one of our lives. She's not yeah. going for the Turners. And I'm I'm right in saying now that she'll get um she'll get a penalty from the mayor's chase. I'm I'm fairly they sure. I'm... They all will though, they all will. Um all of them. Yeah, but... yeah, I think Scarlet and Dove that that I think they'll all have a penalty to uh, to contend with going into March, Ash. So um, I think but... it's um for this the, it's the case of she would have got, I think seven pounds if she went to the turn as well as mm. now she's you know she's she's got that kind of penalty in the mayor's but um look it's been done it's been done before uh Colin Reavy, was it um who managed to do it and look then battle hardened horses like a scarlet and dove and stuff um it'd be hard to get by but um she showed a good turn of foot and jp's not going to be wasting his money i would have said yeah, no, she looks like a, a right one there. And Journey with Me's ran a really good race there in second, yeah. so she's done really well to get up there. Um, I, I'd say now, if I was to give my sort of favourite performance of the weekend, um, I wasn't sort of too, like, taken back as a, a woe at Warwick. Um, and I wasn't really sort of like a, a Kempton sort of bar, bar kind of the obvious ones. But, like, I, I'd say that had, had a Deso Bow in the in the yes. second race, the the, the novice, is it novice handicap or just the handicap, Chase? Um, I really, really liked his performance now, 5-4-5. Um, I was speaking to uh, Jamie Moore afterwards, um, and they, they really like him now. They think he's a proper two-miler. Um, he was just starting to sort of like let go on him there at the finish because he had yeah. no last to, to jump. He had no rails. He was sort of like let going of him. Uh, so they say he's a proper two-miler. He wouldn't want stepping up in trip at all. Um, I thought he jumped really, really well. Um, and look, he, he, he's, won, he's won that race there by 19 lengths. Um, so it'd be really interesting to see where he goes for the rest of the season because he's now got a mark of one four six for Gary Moore. Um, could you see him dot come up in a in a grand annual? You'd be interested. I think he wants this sort of better ground, but he has one on good ground. So like it'd be very interesting to see where he goes. Um, and yeah, no, I, I I can't wait for him now. And he's it'd be uh, it'd be very interesting to see where this Gary Moore runner goes. Um, Hi, sorry, editor and presenter Ash here. Um, while I'm editing this video, I forgot to mention a horse I quite liked. Um, Gaelic Warrior in the Munster Hurdle. Hadn't warned him before today, uh, but I have now. I, I quite liked his performance there. Um, he may not have beaten too much, like Blue Sari is, is fairly rated, but you don't know you know, how, how ready he was for the day. Um, so you'd, you'd be interested to see how that form works out, but I'm not really too concerned about it because I really liked how he, he, how he went now. He just strode on like a really nice horse. Jumped out to his right, which would be a, not really much of a concern in my head. Like, obviously, Cheltenham's left-handed, and you rarely see a horse who jumps out to his right go well at Cheltenham, but it was only small jumps out to his right now, and you'd have to be sort of picky to be picking them out personally anyway. I know many people can have different opinions on that. But, yeah, I forgot to mention Gaelic Warrior. I was quite like that performance. Anyway, um, back, to the, back to the three of us. That'll be sort of where I was lying most of my sort of impressiveness at the weekend we'll come on to the the not so sure section the the section where we there was a performance performances at the weekend you know we can love them or we can hate them that's what racing twitter's for and we're here just to sort of analyze it with a bit of a softer touch you know just maybe a performance we were we were looking we, we thought was you know okay but we weren't taken back by it's not to be sort of one we're saying this is a this is a rubbish horse we can't be having this it's just one of those sort of like we we'll, we we'll want to see next day, see what happens with this horse. 
Uh, but we'll come to you first, Harry, the not so sure section. What do you? Uh, what, what, what are you putting forward? No, it's a little bit of a rogue one, this one. Um, I'm not saying it was a really good performance, because it was. But Flame Bearer in the beginner's chase, mm. I wasn't, oh. I wasn't like, wow. Blown away. Yeah, I wasn't blown away by him. Um, Highland Charge was in there, that was pulled up. Um, the kite race fell apart, and horses aren't going to want, want, want to be close to him, because he is a classy act. Will I be seeing him at Cheltenham? I doubt it. Um, I don't think the Cheltenham, the, the Cheltenham conditions would suit him. Listen, he, he, he's a class act. He had a really good hurdling days last year. Um, obviously running some really nice racing defeat, especially at, was it Punchestown where I think me and you were at, Ash, where he, yeah. was, he was second that day. And he, he kept on really Most, nicely. most probably, um, yeah. Yeah, and you know, he's behind State Man, seven lengths behind State Man. Yeah. Uh, so for me personally, he's probably, he is probably a grade one horse. But for me, I'll, if you're going in at Cheltenham, I definitely wouldn't go in at Cheltenham. That's 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 fair enough. I don't think he'd be. I, I'd be very. Un, I'd be very like sort of unsure now if he actually turn up at Cheltenham. Uh, like I think he say, looks you know. like an entry horse. He looks like an entry horse. And I think or say or probably... same for Punchestown. You know, they can always just keep him yeah. over in Ireland. But it'd be, it'd be interesting where they go with him. Lee, the, the sort of not so sure horse of the weekend. Well. Ash, as you rightly do, you always rein me in, and I was going to slay at this race, but I'll, I'll I'll do a more gentle touch. But um, pick Dory's race oh, was terrible in behind. Look, <laughs> he look. What has he beat? Look, Angel's Breath come back from a long layoff. I got suckered in. I thought pick Pat, Dory no, last that is last the week. Mug punter I've ever seen. Who on earth backs a horse? Listen, thousand days. Listen, all right. <laughs> I actually put Pick Dory up last week on the video and I said it was a good bet. I got sucked in at 11 to 1 for this Angel's Breath. It somehow oh, went off. Like, it got back to 7 to 2 or something. Madness. Look, yeah. Paul Keeley and uh, Tom Siegel and stuff like that, they put them up as well. So don't sleep me, right? Because it wasn't just, just me. But no, if look. Back in, if you're back in the whole of the days, you need your own I was. I, I, did need a, I did need a slap around the face for that one. I, I do agree. But um, look, St. Calvados does know what day of the week it is. And like, there's a, some in the, there behind there were really, really bad runs, and it was over exaggerated. Plundor Castle stayed on the eleven-year-old from a male back to be what beaten thirty length or something madness. But it was, uh, it was just, it was just not a great Can race. I just say something, I can't I just say something on that race. Come on, and then, Kellyn. Ash, you mentioned Saint Calvados as one of your fancies. Now, I was drawn to him throughout the race. Now he actually travelled really. I thought he travelled well, and then just was out the back of the TV screen all of a sudden. Um, but I don't know what they're doing you mean, with him. You mean David Maxwell was like a Houdini? In, oh, I'm not like sure. I'm not sure you can blame Maxwell for that. No. There's, look, there's, there's a few. The there's whole, a few stones you can throw, but I don't think you I'll, can blame I'll him for throw that a stone, one right? Look, the them horses in between, especially seeing Calvados, Dennis the Menace is less of a rogue than these horses. That that they're, they've got no chance of like progressing now. Because St. Calvados finished what in between Min Min and Ryanair and um Apple Todd, then you kind of back him again. Look, I'm we're still picking you up off the cliff there, Ash. Come on. I will I will be backing him the next day now. <laughs> um I I I'll throw one in there which won't be received very well, I don't think. Um, but I'd like to see one more run or just Maybe if he goes straight to Cheltenham, I won't be sort of potentially backing him or looking at him with too much care. Um, but in Pere Pass, I, I'd like to see a, a little yeah. bit more from personally. Like, it's just like it was, first of all, we'll get the sort of like things that's happened to him here in this race. It's heavy ground, so it's always going to be difficult for a horse to perform on that. Second run of the season, I want to say now, or, 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 or yes. first right? second run of the season, won a maiden hurdle by 18 lengths, come into this Moscow Flyer. Moscow Flyer race that's got, you know, brilliant reputation with Willie Mullins' horses. But, like, he's beaten the Model Kingdom, and he's beaten She Could Be Anything. She's beaten the Model Kingdom by six lengths. Now, this horse looked like it was, at one stage, going to travel all over him coming to the last, and then he's just sort of drawn away very nicely. Fair enough. Cool. Have what you want. But, like, will he be winning, will, will he be winning a Supreme? I'd be, un oh, I'd be yeah. unlikely. I'd be unlikely he goes to the race, I'd say. I'd say the supreme horses from Mullins' yard will probably be Fasal Vega and Ilete Tom. 
I'd probably say those are the two. And then, like, go into a Bally more. Like I say, there'd be stronger performances. I could probably name five stronger performances than this one. Like, I'm not knocking it. He's done what he has to do, and he's yeah. beaten these horses. But it's just, like, it wasn't one that blew me away as much as it's some maybe some people did on Twitter. Like, I can name a few more. I'd say... Champ Kylie, Hermes Allen, even Irish Point to finish second uh, to Champ Kylie the, the last yeah, day. Yeah, they get Irish Point in there. <laughs> <laughs> They're probably better performances going into a Ballymore at this current stage. And look, whether we see him before Cheltenham or he goes straight to Cheltenham would be interesting. But like, I wouldn't be backing him at whatever price he is now, six to one, eleven to two. I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not too sure. But again, this could all come round and, and and bite me in the backside as we get to Cheltenham. But we will we will see how that goes for us in the end. Um, we've got a couple races to just to cover on the weekend. Uh, the big race, I suppose, to cover is the Grade One Clarence House Chase at Ascot. Just the free runners now. And Nergamen is your odds-on favourite. Um, I want to say now about four to seven. So I just load prices up on my screen. Um, Edward Stone, the Arca winner from last season, now the Tingle Creek winner, is taking on Nergamen for the very first time at six to four. And Amarillo Sky uh, going for a hat trick. At twenty-five to one in a Grade One, fair play to connections for going there. Harry, yeah. short and sweet. I know your opinion on this, and let's keep this calmed down. Who yeah. wins the Clarence House Chase? Okay, so simple as I'm going to remain calm for the viewers. I'm going to have a nice monotone voice that doesn't actually annoy anybody. No, listen, that is difficult. So yeah, it's a straight hustle, isn't it? Because I think Amarillo Sky is going to be outclassed um, against these two. Now I do have a little. I was doing. I did a part of my blog. Um, I did it on the champion chase, and I'm going to take a little slight angle. I think Edward. I think an Ergamin batters Edward Stone, by the way, on Saturday. But now, if you look at Ergamin's runs, now he got beat by Shishkin, who at the time was at his best. But then after the race, obviously you go, you go to March, and you've got Shakun Porsoir, Shishkin as the kind of main principles lining up against an Ergamin. Both of them left. They 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 they, they didn't run the race. Chuck and Paul fell, and then Shishkin pulled up. Now, kind of, that's kind of like a penalty kick then for an Ergamine, because you'd expect yeah. him to beat the likes of Fernando Silva, um, Edvar Allen, who just can't string two runs together for his life. <laughs> yeah. So you're looking at this now at the champion chase. You, if he beats Edward Stone, fair enough, then that's fine. He's probably that. I think this is definitely his, his hardest test he's ever had against the Tingle Creek winner and now and the Arkle winner. Um, but then I, do, I just think that. Would you not say the Clarence House of last season yes. was the hardest? hardest I would have. Yes, that's fine. Like, um, I thought, I he, think... he was facing. He was facing a Shishkin who's just come off a win um, in the Arkle, and this horse that hasn't really has un, undefeated. I want to say, or, or as as near to undefeated as you can get without being it. Like he's facing Shishkin there in his first run in the UK in, 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 under rules. Like that's a difficult run there for an Ergamen last season. It, yes, it was, but he was beaten. And uh, now this is what I'm saying because if you're looking towards the champion chase markets now, I now I'm going to go back to Blue Lords. You're probably going to smash me, but he this I think the, the champion chase, I think Blue Lord will be the biggest threat to an ergamine that he's had. Now that is just my honest opinion. I agree. I, I, I have like, to agree. I think uh, I think because look, this is going to really shake up the market. Like. If Edward Stones had tailed off, yeah, like you know, it's um, there's only one horse who are backed, and I'm telling you all, he's gonna Lou. win the championship. He's also backed it, just to, just ladies and gentlemen, he's backed it for two races. So, whatever happens, yeah. he's already at a half loss because he's <laughs> yeah. backed it for a different race. But Edward Ergamine wins this, and Ergamine wins this by 10 lengths. Edward Stone, what price is he, what price is he now? Five to two, something like that? What price is he gonna be? He'll probably be, I'd say, he'd be bigger than Blue Lord. I think um, Edwin Stone will um, run a similar race to Shishkin. No one has to try and pounce. I don't think it'll be as much as 10 length, I would have said. Edward Stone is 11 to 4 currently, and Nergaman is 8 to 11. If you look at the champion chase, 8 to 11, 11 to 4, Blue Lord 6 to 1, Green and Teen 18s, Edison G 20s. If you fancy the champion chase, back him now. Yeah. If you fancy. If, if you, well, if you fancy Edward Stone, you should back him now because if he wins on yeah. Saturday, he's going to be odds again. He's going to be odds on. But you might as well oh, back them. Yeah, I'd rather take four to seven in a, in a match race than than go against the likes of a Blue Lord at uh, eight to eleven. Just just smash in now with four to seven if you want, instead of taking eight to eleven two months beforehand. It's, it's I, a I, pers I personally believe that um, Edward Stone is 
I wouldn't be backing him now for the champion chase at any sort of price because the worst the worst price I can put, possibly see Edward Stone going if he wins at the Clarence House on the weekend, the worst of price I can see him go for the champion chase is six to four. I'd say they wouldn't go any yeah. shorter now. I reckon they make him six to four a pair, maybe. If what, it's a sh- what's he now for the champion chase and what's he now um, for the Clarence House? Because it's eleven to four for the champion chase, six to four now. For for the for the Clarence House. Is yeah, but you may as well just you may as well look. But if you fancy one strongly, back them in this match race in, mm. in the Clarence House instead of waiting two months, which is not much difference price wise, to then yeah. have to beat a bigger field. Look, if you fancy one, get stuck in at the weekend. No, I I, I do agree with that. Lee, do you think who do you think is going to win? Very short answer. Who do you think is going to win? Look, Ella Green will win. I don't think it'll be as long as uh, ten length because I think. Um, Big Eddie will have to come and try and pounce on him, and yeah, and Amarillo Sky. Yeah, I don't think that's the case. I think, I think, it, I think Edward Stone will make it. I think he'll make. Do you? Do you really? No, nah. not for me. It would be interesting to see, wouldn't it? Be interesting yeah, I to think, see. I think Enagamine is tactically um, different because I don't think they're going to um, smash out the same as last season and then use all that petrol up like they, they did. I just think um, it's that. Look, it's just a match race. Amarillo Sky will come round his own time, really. I think the one thing you can say is that Edward Stone has proven that he can go from race to race in a fairly short period now. Like, I'd say he's probably the strongest campaign horse in national hunt racing at this top level. Like, you see a lot yeah. of horses have sort of two runs if they're sort of this level and they go to Cheltenham. Like, how many he runs do you have now? How many runs he had now? Like he's run in Tingle Creek. He's run before that now. So like he's already on two at least. Yes, that all good. But Warwick, look, you look at Warwick. He had two. At, he had, yeah, he uh, fell like, in the like, what? He, he fell had, in that, didn't he? Of course. He had two at Warwick. Yeah. He had Kempton, and then was it straight to Cheltenham after that? I, I, I'm che- yeah. So he's he's won the Tingle Creek and he's fell at the Desert Orchid the season before. Like he was Warwick, Warwick, Sandown, Kempton, Warwick. Yeah, that's what. Yeah, so that's it's five, what, and then yeah, he was what, Cheltenham. Like, this the, the one thing you can say is that. As long as nothing sort of like serious has happened from that jump, because uh, it was sort of like a very weird jump that when he unseated his rider there uh, in, in the Desert Orchid, like you say, he's probably the most battle hardened horse coming into this. Like, Anergomen's already had a setback before in his career, he missed the Arkle, if you remember correctly, because he had a setback. Um, so like it's it's, it's interesting, you, he'd be the most battle hardened horse, and you'd probably be like, if both guns were going 100%, he'd probably be the least affected by the Clarence House if, if affected at all, but. It'd be interesting. To see. I I'm sorry to disappoint everyone. I'm still on the fence. Um, I, I don't know. So um, that's my simple. Get advice. off the fence. You'll get needles, pins, and needles. I, I simply don't know. Um, we'll go on to the Grade Two Supreme Tr- Novices Trial over at Haydock, the 130 rare edition. Um, seems to be the British shrewd horse for the Supreme Hurdle currently. Uh, Thirteen to eight for Charlie Longston. Pembroke for Dan and Harry Skelton. Two to one. Chasing fire for a certain trainer on our screen already. Uh, three to one, toothless. Paul Nichols lends two. War Soldier twelve to one. Doyen Star fourteen. So there's more horse than I expected here. I'm going to stop there. Um, <coughs> Harry, <coughs> you're wearing a cap. Uh, it's an Ollie Murphy cap. It's a Warren Chase stable cap. Uh, so I can I could hazard a guess at what you're going to pick for the Supreme Trial. Fire oh, yeah. away. Well, it's one of the horses I actually said over the Christmas period was I was most taken by. Uh, it's chasing fire for the Oli Murphy team. Now, Oli's remaining in good nick. He has been all season. He's had a really good season so far. Um, he can kick on. This six-year-old has been really impressive. I mean, two runs at market raise and all you've got to do, he's, you just got to watch the, the way he goes by. It. He kind of just tanks through his race and he's got that touch of class about him. He kicks on. And it's it was really I think he's won by um, he, he won by sixteen lengths the first time he was asked and then he won by sixteen lengths again so thirty two lengths um, combined over the last two runs listen he, he he looks like a graded horse in the making whether this heavy ground will suit him I'm not too sure but Ollie does like a runner at Haydock um, does quite well here rare edition is going to have to give him three pounds which on heavy ground might listen if it, if it's only a few lengths between them that three pounds could take, definitely take its toll. Pembroke's in there for the Skeletons now. It's absolutely stupid at this point to start taking on Skeletons in a Saturday race because for some reason they just keep winning them. Now, this horse won at Ludlow, absolutely dotted up by 16 lengths. So 
looked really good um, and really impressive when when winning that at Ludlow last time out. Obviously, went to Weathy, Weatherby. <coughs> said Weathy then. Uh, my bad. Weatherby won in, um, on heavy ground in November, so the ground won't be an issue for that horse. But I can't get away from chasing fire. I'm going to keep going until that uh, until he lets me down. So yeah, chasing if you fire. Want- Sorry, if you want some pedigree sort of behind Chasing Fire, his uh, sire, Maxios, um, won uh, a few times now on uh, heavy ground, won a group three over in France on heavy ground, uh, has won a very soft uh, race on heavy ground, uh, uh, yeah, very soft um, graded race there, won a soft race as well, and won another one as well. So he'd be fairly, fairly nice now, I you yeah. assume he'd be fairly suited. Uh, he's won the Prix de Moulon as his sire on soft ground, so you'd say he'd be alright now on pedigree. The, the dam doesn't look half bad. Finished place on a soft ground there, so you, you'd you be alright for chasing fire, Harry. Yeah, I, I can't really see why it'd be an issue, to be fair. And most of Ollie's do go on heavy ground anyway. Mm. Uh, most of them, I mean, obviously we've been to the gallops and they, they are proper soft when they go in and listen, mm. their sta- the, most of their horses are absolutely bred with stamina. So, And he's looked so classy. I just can't get over it. He's he's officially got five pounds to, fi- uh, to find with Rare Edition. But I think he can. he's well up to that. He, he is classy. And people ask why I didn't put Rare Edition in my um, <laughs> Supreme blog. Well, I'll tell you why. Because he get beat by Chasing Fire at the weekend. <laughs> yeah, I, I'd be with you now. It'd probably be Chasing Fire at this early stage, three to one. I thought he was really, really smart um, the last day at Christmas. And uh We'll see how far he can go because they seem to like him now, Ollie Murphy's, and he's waiting for a bit of softer ground with all his runners, um, and he's finally got it. So uh, it is heavy, though, so we'll see how he goes. Uh, Lee, what do you make of the Supreme Trial? Look, I I do like uh, the horse you mentioned there, Jason Fay, but I would like to see a solid performance from Rare Edition to have a, a contender in the Supreme oh, mate, from, come on. from the Brits. Oh, Look, come on. there's nothing there's nothing in there really challenging. Uh Fasail, Marine National, all them. Um look, let get it get with a contender at least, but um it turns into a bit of a slog. Um and it, it, it often uh becomes a stamina race. Look, um your lad was uh, staying on strongly the lane the last day, and I would have it between them two. But um, you don't know what that form it was. It Ru- Ru- Rudard or Rhubarb? Um, R- Rubard. Rubard. Yeah, yeah, Rubard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, what was it? <laughs> Say yeah. this. It was it was Rubard, wasn't it? Rubard. Oh, that's it. Sorry, yeah. I'm, I'm I've butchered that one. But um, yeah, no, uh, you don't know what that form's like. They did pull a long way clear there, but um, it just like to see. Uh, look, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be having a bet to be totally honest. There. Um, yeah, no, it's a very nice horse at the Tottenham Market. Rare edition. We'll see how far he can go. Uh, the final race we're going to be quickly covering at Haydock is the race after the Supreme Trial. It is the new one, Unibet Hurdle, registered as the Champion Hurdle Trial. Um, and Epitont open tops the market at five to four on for Nicky Henderson, uh, the, the the legendary Epitont who was left out of the Mayor's Hurdle because Nicky um, forgot. Um, I like to move it for the Twist and Davises at 11 to four. <laughs> First Street for Henderson again, fours, and you can have what you like about the rest. Harry, as CEO of the Epitont Fan Club, um, does she go? Uh, I, I know you, you probably can't answer that question, but if she does go, would you like her chances? Um, surprisingly, uh, oh, no. no, no, I wouldn't. Uh, the one horse I, I would like to be on in this, and listen, I don't know what they're doing with this horse because he's, I don't think he's a, he's a grade one horse. I thought he'd win the rail keel, but he didn't. Um, it's first street for Nicky Henderson. I actually really like this horse. Um, now he's off, he's officially rated 152, so you'd think he, he can't do anything with handicaps or anything like that, but. Because I think he's a graded horse. Now, if he had any chance to exploit a handicap mark, I think he'd win some of those big handicaps where you can have the graded horses in the handicaps. Now, yeah. I like to move it. Disappointed, in my opinion. Now, why I don't think the, those two should be the other way around. I, I can see four to one. You can see I like to move it. He looked really good um, at Cheltenham on his penultimate start. But for me, I think the value place in the value play in this is definitely first street because Epiton, I don't believe she's Ryan heavy. Um, I think all of her, I mean, listen, she won, she won in France on very soft right at the beginning of her career. So you'd imagine that um, she should go on that ground, but it's been, I mean, that was 
about five six years ago now so horses horses don't have to take to it and if they don't they don't now i think first street at four to one is probably a value play yes it'd be very interesting to see how they go um lee the champion hurdle trial go go far away what do you fancy for the race well, look, no, normally we can get stuck in a few and um, I just take caution with the race. I don't know if they both go of there of Nicky's. Um, I think Epiton, her class would shine on the ground. She does stay that bit further and um, I would take her if if you had a nail to the mass. But look, um, I, w- I wouldn't be having a bet again. I'd just say a bit caution and see how it comes at the weekend. The ground can get very testing there though. So, uh, yeah. If you put a gun to his Epiton, but I would say no bet. I, I'd say the one that's sort of interesting to me, especially on the sort of ground, and the ground is a real big factor here, and it I, I don't know whether I'd be interested having a bet or not, but like it's a massive price now, and you'd be taking a big leap that you can get back to his former self. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, Jason the Militants, former Henry de Bromhead horse, now with Philip wow. Kirby. Um, you having to go through back for a few runs, was was third in October in the horse and jockey hotel. Uh, sorry, was fourth. In that race, quite a long way back, ran actually ran in the um, in the Irish Saint Ledger, won by Kiprios, and was uh, about twenty two lengths behind there. You have to go back a bit, a bit further, a bit further, back to Tipperary in October twenty twenty one, where he was then third in the Horse and Jockey Hotel. That was won by Solier. Um, before that, back in February twenty twenty one, he ran the Red Mills Trial Hurdle and beat Petit Mouchoir on softer ground. Um, he's won a listed event on the flat on heavy ground. That was the finale stakes at Nace. And before that, he was third to Abracadabra. Before that, he was third to Aspire Tower. And then he's won a main hurdle on soft ground. Like, all of his form is on soft or heavy ground. Um, he was being sort of tipped up as this sort of, like, champion hurdle horse from seasons gone by. And I don't think he actually made it to the race. But it's, it, it'd be very interesting now to see sort of how he can go. And I'd be, I'd be quite interested in Jason the Militant if he can sort of get back to his form because the ground will be right there for him. And um, yeah, he's under under new training now, Philip Kirby. So 20 to 1 to a massive price for this 154 rated hurdler. Um, best rate, highest rated hurdler in the race. 20 to 1 on ground he likes. Let's let's have a go at that. Why not? Jason the Militant. We'll have a little bit of play at that. Um, Harry. Have you any fancies or what's your best bet for the weekend at this current stage? Uh, well, chasing fire at three to one is probably going to be my nap of the weekend at this mm. current stage. Um, I was sick when I heard Raw Pagai wasn't going to the Gold Cup. <coughs> now, it's one of those things. He's obviously going to win the Gold Cup, isn't he? So I'm not too bothered <laughs> about that. Uh, Bristol Demai is back in the Peter Marsh, though. And at six to one, Round his beloved Haydock. Now that isn't each way back to nothing. He's half handicap well now, isn't he? He's I like know he is. Five, I know he is. One five two, is it? He, he's he's off one five four. He's that's a twelve it. year old, but if that's heavy ground, he didn't run at all bad in the uh, Betfair chase. I didn't think he ran well to a point, and he was just outclassed at the end. I think his legs caught. But now nah, there's no such thing as. Um, protector out in this race or the likes of the others. Mm. Fontaine Collange is off 137. Now that horse, Venetia Williams, heavy ground, a horse that's well handicapped off 10 stone four. You can hardly go wrong with that horse. But at four to one, I think it's a little bit skinny. Bear in mind, I think there's going to be a few in there. I think there's 13 at the minute. Mm. Um, Black Line's in there. I mean, Black Line won at 14 years old. That'd be some story, wouldn't it? Really? <laughs> but for me, I'm going to I'm gonna say Bristol Demise, six to one. It's probably an each way bet to nothing. Um, yeah, what's what's sort of interesting about this race at this current stage is that Sam Brown's holding all the weights up at uh, 11 stone 12, and it is a limited handicap chase. So you may go through the racing post and you see horses here like, um, I don't know, Cooper's Cross there on 9 stone 9. The lowest weight you can actually run in this race is 10 stone 6. So if, if Sam Brown does stand his ground and it's still early entries, he may not go, and then you're dropping down to Dusa off, uh, off 11 8, who will then be shoved up. Um, at this current stage, uh, Dr. Kanaga for, for for Ben Clark is the current like literal bottom weight. He is uh, ten stone six with a marker one three nine. So anything below is kind of out of the handicap slightly. Fonte Colange would be a couple of pounds out of the handicap. Black Lion uh, is a bit bit more. So it'd be interesting to see how they go. Uh, but Bristol Demai, yeah, one five four. You do remember he was second in the Grand National Trial in February twenty twenty two of a mark of one five nine. But he's now actually the winner because the galloping bear was disqualified of course so um 
it'd be interesting to see how he can go. Uh, Lee, do you have any other bets of the weekend or is it straight on to the sort of best bet of those sort of uh, graded races? I'm just laughing. You, you love these old boys. Look, I've got I've got Calvin Klein's the same age as bloody Bristol, like how it. But look, he's, he's love an old lad, you do. Um, no, I've got no bets for the handicaps. Um, best of luck to you. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you a, a couple. I'll give you a couple now for the Peter Marsh. Uh, and I believe they are uh, younger sort of horses. They're not 12 years old, which is <laughs> which is new for me. Uh, Empire Steel for Sandy Thompson. Yeah. I'd be interested by the chance that this horse was uh was second in this race no pull, pulled up in this race last year um but the the year before that i think did all right uh just just getting my notes together now um he'll stay on this his ground will be great for him he absolutely loves the softer yeah. conditions and it's looking to be heavy ground there he'll stay definitely this distance he fell in the roland merrick last year when looking like the most likely winner that's over a, a fair whack of a trip now so uh that's over was it three mile two is it or something like that just a, just a sh shade of three miles the roland merrick so he'll definitely stay this distance um and yeah i'd be interested by empire still for marker one four three for sandy thompson i'll also give uh, the Ben Clark runner, Dr. Dr. Kananga, uh, a little shout here. It's third to Eva's Dr. Oscar Kananga, it is. Kananga, there we go. There we it's go. a James Bond character, just so you know. There we go. That's my knowledge completely gone there already. Um, third to Eva's Oscar on heavy at Exeter. Um, gave three pounds away that day, and that horse uh, is now rated 10 pounds better and was a winner at Cheltenham at the December meeting when there was the first day and not the second day. Uh, ben Clark obviously won the Grand National Trial last year, but it's been stripped away. And you'd be sort of wondering if he sort of had an eye on one of these big Haydock handicaps to, to come and steal one of his horses. Um, and uh, yeah, it'd be, it'd be interesting to see how this horse can go. It'd be the softer condition to be right up his street. And he looks like he could he could stay for days now. So um, I, give the, I give the two there at 10 to 1 and uh, 8 to 1. Empire Steel and the James Bond character uh, a shout at, uh, at the prices. Um, I believe that's all we have time for. Lee, we have a competition running for some Nerga Men merch. Far away. Yes, we do. Uh, from recent tees, uh, we'll have a competition every week. And there's a good Nerga Men um, hoodie there. Zip up hoodie looks great. Um, you just go on to our um, Only Fools the Horses page on Twitter, uh, retweet the the tweet there was sent out and follow um racing tees and only the fools love horses and uh you'll be in with a chance to win we'll do one every week um so keep an eye out but yeah an ergamine one there it looks great and we'll announce the winner on saturday at 10 30 a.m on our saturday show yeah definitely the one thing i wanted to mention about empire steel is they probably ran him over the wrong distance the last day in the uh in the two and a half mile entry handicap he's been dropped two pounds for that on probably the wrong distance and the wrong ground and he's already finished second in a handicap chase for marker 140 last season so uh at a haydock so it'd be very interesting how he goes um that is all as you said we have time for and do please do go check out that giveaway on Twitter. Uh, do please go check it out and to make sure you can get in with a chance of winning the Energa Men merch. Uh, we'll be back yeah. on Monday morning for our uh, Cheltenham Antipost series, episode three. Uh, it'll be really, really good episode. We've already filmed it, as I said. Uh, so I'm looking forward to releasing that one. And 10.30 a.m. on Saturday. Make sure to check us out on Twitter for our finalised thoughts on the week on the weekly action on saturday uh for our for our thoughts on that one if you did enjoy please do like and subscribe and follow us on twitter um and do follow the only force of horses account on twitter <laughs> thank you very much uh have a great week and we'll see you next time cheers lad.